Hi, welcome to my playhouse and today we're in the data center. I'm gonna be um, swapping around uh, a couple of servers. Well, one server is coming in, one server is going out and um, that's because I have a server down here. It's, it's an IBM X3850 M2, um, an older server but still a good server and I've been using this server for my student at work, intern and um, yeah, they, they kind of get to make uh, VMware machines on there so they install ESXi and they, and they make different virtual machines make their own little environment on there and try out different stuff including some network features that could be damaging to uh, a big corporate network so the server is here at my playhouse because then I can have the intern, the student do whatever and it's only my stuff that will get messed up like when they mess with DHTP or DNS or makes a router the wrong way so we lose connection I can fix that when I get home so so the system will just be down for the rest of the day until I shut off the student server and fix the problem whereas if we did this at work it would definitely not be that great so I have a server here and uh, it's not a big deal I used to have an old IBM 3950 X3 that one we replaced a couple of years ago and now um, I'm updating it to the X5 IBM 3850 X5 that we have been messing with in the living room for some time wanted to test it out before the student get it I want to have my fun too so today we are more or less just taking this server out it's down here, it's, it's off right now it's Saturday, students don't work on Saturdays so. Uh, yeah, it's shut off. So I'm gonna remove it from the rack. He has removed anything of importance, anything he was working on. So it should be just taking this one out, putting the new one in. I need to go into the IMM on the new server to open up so that we can get access to um, to the server. He remotely manages it from outside, so um, it's easier if that IP number is just the same. Here we are around the back and well this huge server only has two connections one network connection and one for the management port and then two power connections so it's it's gonna be easy PC it's just disconnect 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 so we're just gonna disconnect there and the two power cords um, both of these are black which means that well they if the power goes this server goes down it doesn't matter so yeah, we're good to pull that out. Oh, we got a, why is that on now? Hmm, okay, it went out. Yeah, these things are heavy. So, let's see if we can manage. On the side of it, there's two blue thingies here that you push and you can pull the server a little bit further out and it releases the locking mechanism for the rails that goes up. There's like spikes here that goes up into the server and locks it in place and we need to do that. So all the way out and I, I push that and we can take it out. It also slightly further and I will be able to lift it up. There we are. Oops. Holy. Oh, it's heavy. of spots become available further down here so I'm gonna move the server down to you right now this is locked into place there is this blue thing here uh, that you ever so slightly push forward and when you do that it opens up and the rail goes back like that new plan I, I just got suspicious so I went in and I looked and it seems that the IBM 3850 X5 does not use the same rail system as the X3850 M2 so we need to take these rails out and find some other ones for it that will actually work I hope I have a pair and this is kind of a cool mechanism for locking the, the rails in place it has like a little springy thing I'll go around the back and dismount back here
Yikes! Oh, the embarrassing truth. I have been searching and searching and searching and it seems that I don't have a rail kit for the IBM 3850 X5. They changed it up. It's, it's now one of those that you put in and you put it down and there are some round taps that it has to fit into and I checked if uh, it would be the same rails as on the M2, M3, M4, M5. It's not. So they, they moved the, the holes that is going to keep the server up so those rails are not going to be working. So uh, this uh, video very rapidly turned from a how-to video to a how not to video. Um, so I've mounted some ordinary sliders there just so that the server is not going to be sitting on top of my UPS. My awesome IBM UPS down here. Got new batteries a couple of years ago and it has still only been used once. We only had one power failure here in the last two years. But the batteries was all good. I will um, slide the server in. This is not optimal. I need to go get myself a rail kit for the X5. But um, yeah, I want it out of the living room, so I, I did this. Look at the lighting behind here. This is the this is the flashlight that a subscriber Marcus gave me, and it's magnetic, so it just goes in there. It's like LED lighting in the data center. It does look kind of cool, doesn't it? So yeah, gotta go get the server. This is a three-man server. It's 32 kilograms minimum, and there's a lot of heavy RAM in this one. And I do believe that there is something on the drives as well, so it weighs a bit extra. Three men, or one Viking. Rawr! These are the taps that are different. That um, it's not like the M2 that we just took out, and there is nothing to go up here like the M2 had. So uh, yeah, I don't have those rails. I need those rails um, and also there is like a, a difference here it goes in here to make room for the rails here so the thinkies I put up here I made sure to get the ones that I could find that goes in the deepest and it's, it's still it's still gonna be hanging on just a little bit but a little bit is better than nothing have been around the back connecting power to it looks nice um, it has a the front of it has some broken plastic which is a blotchy shame um, these fillers just gonna put those in makes it look cooler and makes so that the air doesn't go that way and especially when the servers are working hard they blow all the air through the servers and around the back and so that the air has a harder time um, getting back this way, it, it helps with the fillers. Uh, there is a fan back there that blows the air out. Um, actually only, only to the other side of this wall right now, but uh, a little bit further away. So yeah, let's, um, let's power this. So server is booting up. I need to go into the BIOS and tell it that the IMM has gotten that new IP number or give it that number 208 it needs to have and that's the usual F1 and we are in and that's under the system settings and down under integrated management module there we are and we need to go down into network configuration there and my playhouse that that's a good name i like that one and um, right now it's set to dhtp with failover mm, i'm gonna change that to static ip there and then we're gonna change that for that one and ip version 6 i'm gonna use that so that is disabled rest is all good so uh, but they hide the the save button down here. That's it's kind of irritating. It would be great if they had a save down here. Well, yeah. I guess the server is so old that they're probably never going to fix that. Even if I'm whining about it. So yeah, fix that. So we can go out. 
and the server is booting up again. I do believe that I have Windows on this still, server 2019, so uh, let's see if, if that boots. The M1015 rate controller. Uh, do we have Windows? Come on, yes, we have that. In here in the living room, the IMM is now responding on, um, well, IP number 208 at the last little bit. And I can see how the server is doing. 22 degrees in the data center. Power levels are good. And we can also go and do a remote desktop to it, which I have already done, which is always fun with the Java thing that is uh, running on there. So uh, yeah, ha ha. We can kind of log in from here. Just need to send the keyboard command to it. There. And we might want to change the resolution down ever so slightly. I had it connected to a 4K monitor and uh, it looks really ridiculous right now. So um, display settings. It's way better for server use. So cool. And let's just check if folding at home has uh, started working on this. Oh dear, it seems like everything is working 100% here on something. And I'm, I'm speculating that that might be folding at home. Therefore, it's too busy to tell me how it's going. So, yeah, eh. need to figure that out. So I guess you know that I'm promoting bargain hardware. And a lot of you guys have told me that this is an awesome place to be shopping and I have had absolutely no problems with the with the shopping that I've done here and it was the first thing that I checked out if I could get rails for my X38 X5. I am unlucky they don't have rails for that but look at that they have rails uh, rack mounting rails or they call it rail kits for 106 different models so there is a lot of rails here uh, just look at that and that's both well there is IBM there is Dell there is Hewlett Packard the Sun Super Micro and there is cable management arms if you're into that good stuff and for Yitsu rails over here so this would be a really normal rail kit for what I'm using I'm very often messing with the M2, M3 and M4 of the IBM slash Lenovo X3650 series so a set like that is about 48 pounds so I need to go find some rail somewhere else but if you are looking for something server and hardware related check out bargainhardware.co.uk and if you check out with the coupon code my playhouse small letters all the way um you get five percent off but i'm ready for the student to start using this server again just need to go in and create the login and the password for the imm i kind of have two of them so that if um, if they mess that up, I have a back door so that I, I can go in and do other stuff. And uh, that has helped from time to time. The server is newer, so they will be able to install newer versions of ESXi. I think 6.7 will work on this. I think we found out that 7.0 is not going to be working on this. But also, we'll be able to put in a graphics card and maybe um, they can mess around with that. See if they can get a graphics card working in there. Maybe even make a manual for me sometimes so that I don't have to um, figure out everything myself. That would be awesome. Just have them uh, do everything and I can do a video on it afterwards. Mm. Yeah, I like that idea. Thank you. Good idea. Thank you. So this turned from a how-to to a how-not-to video, but um, please uh, give me a like anyway. I'm very honest about it, definitely, right? So um, please like. And if you're a patron of mine, remember to go and watch the Patreon videos. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye-bye. <laughs>